I'd just like to highlight to you the absurdity of the discussion that we are about to have. There are currently two nuclear reactors in the United States that are leaking. The Indian Point nuclear reactor in New York and the Turkey Point nuclear reactor in Florida. The one in Florida is leaking tritium, which whenever it gets into the water supply, as it is, replaces hydrogen in H2O. Whenever it does that, if you ingest it, then you are susceptible to the beta decay that this particular isotope exhibits. Uh, we're not talking about that, though, today. We're actually talking about why HB2 matters to more than just a particular demographic, the one that I'm a part of, but actually to pretty much every demographic that's not white, heterosexual, cisgender, and typically male. Oh, and let's not forget Christian. They have to be a particular type of Christian. They have to be a conservative. But, you know, there's other things, bigger things that are happening that just have to wait because we have to figure out what's in people's pants. The bill in North Carolina was passed off as the Public Facilities Privacy and Security Act. However, it did nothing to protect privacy or security of anyone outside of a particular demographic. In fact, this bill was in response to an ordinance in Charlotte, North Carolina that allowed trans individuals to self-identify and use public facilities as they saw fit. The ordinance also prohibited businesses from discriminating on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. It is absolutely ridiculous to believe that any trans individual would be willing to expose themselves to the statistically likely harassment, injury, or death from using a facility with a bigot in it. Trans individuals that are dealing with dysphoria, social anxiety, and other obstacles because they live in such a biased society aren't interested in using facilities that don't match them to a T. Individuals choose where to use the bathroom based on their feelings, how they appear, and whether it would be safe or not. Because they're not interested in harming anybody, they're looking to use the restroom in a place that won't harm them. How often have you bypassed a restroom on the highway or elsewhere just because you didn't think that it was quite up to your standards. Additionally, as I've said before, the only men in femme spaces are cisgender men and cisgender men only. To put their issues and inability to function in society on us is absurd. And I'm sure I'll get a hashtag not all men. But you know what? I already know that. And you should know that I already know that. Otherwise, you're not really interested in having a conversation. You're merely interested in derailing it. So get out of my face. But I digress. These individuals don't want to solve the actual problem. They would much rather use the fear induced by rape culture perpetuated by some cisgender men so that they can push their biblically-rooted agenda. Wow, that sounds awfully conspiratorial. Who could be pushing this God-fearing, pious agenda? Well, actually, the campaign advisors for Ted Cruz's Council for Religious Liberty. And yes, this is the year 2016, you did not get teleported back in time. We are essentially being marched ever closer towards a theocracy, just because a vocal minority has the microphone. The individuals pushing this bill and advising Ted Cruz on religious liberty are David and Jason Benham, identical twins. Both of them graduated from Liberty University, 
but don't let the name fool you because it is a private, non-profit Christian university with staunch Southern Baptist fire and brimstone teachings. In fact, this university teaches young earth creationism as science and has been criticized many times as being a sham of an institution. These two brothers are prominent Christian leaders and devout anti-LGBTQIA plus advocates. They even believe that their show that was due to air on HGTV was cancelled due to the gay agenda rather than perhaps their disregard for basic human rights. These people claim that abortion rights, Islam, and the homosexual agenda are the result of demonic forces present here on Earth. Essentially, they are delusional, entitled cisgender males that wish to push their own agenda and make everyone abide by it. And I dare say, it is everyone. This was never just about trans people. The wording of this bill actually says that it limits individuals' rights to pursue justice when discrimination is faced based on race, color, national origin, religion, disability, or sex. It also disallowed cities from setting minimum wage standards for private employers. Should I even mention that whenever they define biological sex, they actually count whatever's on your birth certificate? I mean, everyone does know we don't check chromosomes or basically anything else other than what the doctor thinks about the kid's genitals? Like, can we have that co No, that's a conversation for another time. One could actually also discuss how this narrative of we must protect the white women and children has been used to justify violence against various demographics. How it has been used time and time again to destroy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for anyone there was not a white, cisgender, heterosexual, typically male, individual. Perhaps that's something to discuss another time. But remember, if the shoe fits, wear it. Don't get upset at the facts or how they're presented. Perhaps you should examine your belief and find out why that cognitive dissonance is occurring in the first place. You might find some unwanted gunk in your mind that you have yet to clean. And remember, we have to clean our gears every day for a healthy, functioning brain. After all, why not make the earth better for everyone? I hope that you stay safe, witchlings. Know that you are incredible, and I appreciate you. Thank you for joining me, and don't forget to check me out on social media if you'd like to continue the discussion. If you'd like to stay up to date with my videos, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, bye.